Hi guys, Courtney here from Home Fairy. And this week in our flow and hold practice, one of the poses we focus on holding is camel pose. So I wanna show you some variations for camel pose so you can make it a pose that you can actually hang out in for a little bit as opposed to struggling with it and going way too far and then either filling it a lot in the low back or just not being able to hold it for an extended period of time because the holding open of this pose is part of the benefit of really finding that openness, that stretch, and then just being able to find your place in it. So I have a few props here that might make it easier. One is a couple of blocks. One is a blanket. Blanket, really simple. Padding the knees is always helpful, especially if you have sensitive knees definitely take padding underneath it. But even if you don't, just give it a try. See what it feels like to have a little bit of support under the knees as opposed to the knees being on a hard surface of a mat. The other prop that we're going to explore using is a bolster. These bolsters are a little bit skinnier. If you have the bigger round bolsters, that might be better, or the slightly thicker um, size bolster as well. But with all of these props, we'll explore a lot of different ways that we can play with this pose. And I might even move over to the wall and show you some variations there. So number one, making sure that if you would like to try it, blanket underneath the knees. And there's a couple of different ways you can use the blocks. So the first way I'm going to show is just to give a block in between the legs to give a little squeeze. Now, you might have seen me do this either, especially if you come to classes with me, or i um, not sure if I did this in my Tadasana video, but when you think about the various instructions that we have, whether it's standing, down dog, forward folds, a lot of people tell us to engage the core. We extend the tailbone, take the tailbone down, tailbone down, tuck the tailbone. So the extreme of it looks like this, and it's sending that block forward. So if you do that, you feel a lot of crunch around the sacrum and the tailbone. That's not very good. The other extreme is you're spinning the inner thighs up and back. Well, when you do this, you feel a broadening across the tailbone, but you start to feel that crunch in the lower back. So what you actually want is a place that's somewhere between those two where you're squeezing the inner thighs, you're engaging through the core, you feel that broadness across the upper hips and no crunch in your lower back. And that place where you have everything engaged is the place that you wanna be. And if it's helpful to have the block there, then keep the block there to do it. Or you can take the block out, sit it to the side and just keep that engagement. Now, a lot of times when I start to work into camel, as opposed to focusing on coming into this back bend really quickly, I first inhale, lengthen my hands up, find a little stretch side to side, keeping that engagement in the legs so that I feel my side body lengthening and then exhale, trying to keep that length, hands come to either side of the sacrum, fingertips pointing down so that I can focus on pushing the hips forward. So from the push of the hips forward, the engagement in the thighs, the lift through the side body, next step is to just take a couple of little shoulder rolls here so that you feel the shoulder blades on the back scooping the heart up. Taking a nice deep inhale in behind the heart center. And as you exhale and let that air out, maybe you press the hips forward and soften in more. Now it is completely up to you how much you inhale and exhale, soften into this. But don't let the hips go back. That makes you work a lot harder. And don't let the head drop back. This is not a back bend, this is a neck bend. So see if you can keep neck, for the time being at least, in line with the spine and keep focusing on the breath here, inhaling and exhaling, softening in. Now this may be your version of camel pose. This may be where you come to. But 
If you feel like it's really easy for you to reach the hands back for the heels, this is a more classic version of camel. You can focus on extending the crown of the head out and then maybe let it rest a little bit if you would like. You can also untuck the toes, come a little further back, keep focus on sending the hips forward. And when you come out, you're gonna use the core to lift you. You're gonna tuck the chin just a little bit so that when you lift up, you're not dragging the head up. Now, I said the bolster is another way that you can find your way into camel. And so the bolster is really handy. It also, like I said, depends on the size of your bolster. You can even use two bolsters. But if you just really want to drop the hands down behind you, but that's a long ways for you to go from here, you can work your way in. Hips come forward, rolling the shoulders back, lifting the heart up, finding your breath. And then instead of having to go all the way to the heels, the hands can come to the bolster. And it gives you that little bit of lift and you can still practice working into this pose. Reaching crown of the head back and taking your gaze towards the ceiling. And when you're ready, inhale, lift up, same way. And if you don't have bolster, but you happen to have blocks you can always take the blocks out by the side. This might mean that you have to bring the feet in a little bit closer, knees in a little bit closer, so that as you drop back from this space, you find yourself coming to the blocks. The blocks are a little unsteady. So you do have to do a lot of work to keep your body steady in this posture, but it is another option. Okay, last option. And this option's possibly a little bit more for people who are working deeper into this pose, but you could also do it even if your hands are at the hips. But the idea is, and let me bring my blanket with me since I'm gonna do this at the wall. I should practice what I preach, right? But the idea here is you want a little bit of feedback for the hips. So if you come back and you don't really notice that your hips are shifting back, the wall will give you a little bit more tactile feeling. So for this, you're gonna have to get really cuddly with the wall. <laughs> Hunt the body to be really close to it and don't stick your hand into a uh, socket. But from here, you're gonna find the hands coming to the hips, gluing the hips against the wall. And as you drop down, still keeping hips towards the wall, opening the heart up. If you wanna untuck the toes, the focus is really on finding that lift of the hips without squeezing into the sacrum too much and opening the heart up here. And then when you're ready, tuck chin towards chest, lift back up, say thank you for the help wall and take a little scoot back. So that's a lot of different options for coming into camel pose that gives you the option to go a little bit deeper, to get some tactile feedback, or to keep it a little bit lighter. So find the option that works best for you, play around with them because different days, different options might be more suitable. Thank you for watching, namaste.